So can you just uh, can you just talk about a bit about just to talk a bit about like uh, how you kind of came on board uh, with the show and like how you, your first kind of initial reactions? Well, my um, I got got the job through a straight up audition, and I didn't know much about the show at all. Um, I had a brief clip from uh, a, uh, my audition sides were from uh, the pilot episode where we uh, uh, where there's the uh, the fatal game of rock paper scissors, you know, and I had lines like. Uh, I knew I was playing a raccoon, and I had lines like, uh, two ties, you don't know what I'm throwing next, baby. And I had no idea what that meant. I thought that could be talking about neckties, I didn't know. But so I just I just thought, well, he's a, kind of a rad character, so I went with, you know, two ties, you don't know what I'm gonna throw next, baby. And that got me a call back, and, um, and eventually I got the job. So, and it's the best job in the world, I have to say. Uh, I actually went to school with JG, so we, he made he based a lot of the characters off of his school films, and I did voices for him in school because we were both in the same animation class. So um, that's how I got onto the shows. But. You talk about that, like you talk talking about like how the voice kind of. I mean, you talk about the process of kind of coming up with the voice and like what you take from like the, just the lines and like the kind of thought process, I guess that that would that you go through in creating a voice. Well, I knew that when I was first creating the voice, I knew that it would probably play in my higher register because he's kind of a youngish energy. And I also knew that um, uh, he would be probably quick and impulsive. And then um, JG helped us, helped me craft that. And, uh, and I honestly based a lot of it on my 12-year-old son, Ian, because uh, he's, um, he's a real good model for Rigby. Uh, I think... I think uh, for Pops, especially, it came from like the drawings, because the first time I did him, JG just had like little thumbnails that he had done really quick um, when he was making the first film of Pops, and I just knew that he was British and had like the top hat and was a lollipop man, so I think that kind of just came from the drawing, and then um, Benson is kind of based, uh, I don't know, I got just uh, kind of probably some parts of me and and um, just knowing that he's like a kind of aggressive character but um, uh, and then yeah I think the drawings mostly for Muscle Man too probably a lot of JG's drawings get the inspiration for the voices can you talk about like just the the format of the show? I know like a lot of these animated shows are doing like eleven or fifteen minute um, kind of formats instead of the normal twenty two or half hour shows. I mean, do you think do you think that's more effective for a medium like this, or just or especially or for a show like this? Absolutely. I think that uh, you know our our audience are people that like stories that move quickly. Uh, you know, they want to watch something fun and then be on to something else. And I think this plays really well into that. I think it also. Uh, dictates that the show moves quickly and I think that's uh, I don't know how our writers do it I think they're they're kind of amazing but I think that that's that, sh- that sh- uh, short format really uh, really helps propel the story yeah I, I agree too I would like to see some episodes some like long I would like to see a longer episode because I think sometimes they have to cut a lot of stuff and it's probably it's probably hard for them to it's probably harder for them to fit it in a short time I would imagine um and to keep coming up with that many, that many shorter stories instead of just elaborating on, on one idea. But um, I do like the short, short format because you can just um, have a lot of different episodes and different ideas, and kind of go through and watch the movie. It'd be kind of cool to just like throw in like like maybe once a season, just like a special half hour episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'd like to see that. Yeah, I, and I, there's been talk about that kind of thing happening we don't know for sure but uh, you know or, or maybe something thematically running through a couple of different episodes that tie them together so like is there like are you guys kind of in production on this on the the new season then or is, is like I, I know it takes kind of a while for everything to get to get rolling with animation like it is a big gap between actual production and when it airs so i i think we're on oh. season three now probably um yeah i mean the actual time it takes from from like recording it and boarding it, I think it's like five or six months it's for them to animate it and for it to yeah. be on air. That's the other thing. It's, it's our, we we do so many of these shorter episodes in a in a compressed period of time. It's it's hard for me personally to keep track of like kind of where we are in the season. Like, yeah. So they they just like call you in for like a couple months at a time and just just knock everything out like right there. Well, they they we've been going more or less nonstop. 
but we get but we get pretty far ahead of, of you know when the uh, when the episodes come out. So can you talk about just like where you'd like to see each both both your characters kind of progress as like the new seasons like as you get beyond where you are now. Yeah, I like. I know that there's a there's a, a kind of a romantic storyline developing between um, Mordecai and and Margaret, and uh, I'd I'd kind of like to see that explored with Rigby and Eileen, and uh, you know I don't know uh, I, I don't know where they're going to head for that with that for sure, but I, I think I think Rigby's got a lot of growing up to do, and it'd be nice to see him do a little bit of it. Yeah, um, I like the whole idea of the characters with sort of romantic interests but my characters don't have any of those so I would like I would like to be part of that <laughs> <laughs> hint hint writers hint hint <laughs> so just, uh, just what would you like to wrap up what would you like to say to fans who've been tuning in about why they should uh, keep tuning in about what other extras or what will be coming up on the show that they, they'll really enjoy well what I'm thrilled about and what keeps happening is we keep getting these pretty amazing guest stars and pretty amazing uh, uh, musical um, interludes on the show from really hot bands and really interesting people from the 80s. We do a lot of callbacks to the 80s on the show, as you probably know. And so uh, uh, I look forward to more of that, and uh, and I think the fans can too. I can't, I can't name names, but there's going to be people showing up who, uh, voices showing up that uh, both the parents and the kids will recognize. Yeah, I'm... I'm I, I definitely get excited about a lot of the actors that come and record with us too. Um, I think the thing I'm most excited about is just like what we're talking about, like where the characters are going and like just the new, new what, what new episodes they're going to write because I think they keep kind of pushing them more to just bizarre places or just getting more and more clever with the plots and things. So. You can't say who any of these guest stars are then? No. Not one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs>